Do you guys have any uh, other questions as far as, as this goes? I think now we can go into like almost a little question and answer for whatever you guys need to work on, whatever you wanted to rack my brain about. So with the drip, mm -hmm. you're saying you put it in the, in the trees? That's what I do. And, in, and even, let me see this, and even if you have a different grip than that to where it's even a little, a little bit down, okay. you just need to notice where that is, okay? And then that's where you're going to follow through. You need to follow through with what it, wherever the grip is right here. That's going to be your consistent spot, right? To where now you can follow through on that spot through impact. And that's what's going to give you that. You know, a, a really good tip that I can give you is to go watch a lot of slow motion of the best players in the world. And you'll see that they all do it. They all, through impact, they're, they're going to be on the same plane through that shot where the disc is. 100% of the time, almost every single time. Oh. Do you bring the same aspects in, uh, in a hand grip to your putting as well? Um, not, not necessarily, but you can definitely you can definitely transfer them to putting. You can transfer them definitely to sidearm. You know, uh, sidearm's the same thing. You have that in in your hand, and I always say use the palm as your guide of whatever angle you want to throw on, right? To where, like, again, this is a really stable disc, and it's all about follow through to be able to like manipulate the disc into doing whatever you want it to do. Will you um, a for yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I need somebody to come tell me an angle to throw it on, so I can kind of. It's really stable. This one is. Yep. Just knife it? Okay. So he wants me to throw it on this angle. Okay, the big flex. Now what I'm going to do is, in order for me to hit that angle exactly where I want, it's the same thing that has to do what I was talking about with the back end. I have my grip that I have. I know that if I follow through from here all the way down with my grip, that that's the angle it has to come all on. It has to. Now, if I throw and I get behind myself and then all of a sudden I'm dropping and I'm like this, then it won't go on that angle. But if I wanted to, like you said, hit this angle no matter what, I'm watch my follow through when I come through. It's definitely going to be like this all the way down on that angle. Okay. Right. Did you see how I was really focused on bringing it down through? And the same thing if I were to just throw a hyzer. I'll throw a hyzer to just like that sign. <laughs> oh. So I'm going to make sure to follow through. I like to use my palm as an indicator of, of my angle control. If my palm's flat and I throw a sidearm flat, I try to use that palm and keep that palm up through the whole shot. If I'm trying to throw a hyzer, I'm going to try to keep that palm on my hyzer line the whole way. If I'm going any, same thing, palm. So I'll try to just do this, and if I go up, then no matter what, that's what it has to do. Well, that's a good question. My question is, when powering down on a disc, like if you're trying to take something off of it, are you still getting the same snap through it? Are you using your body to slow it down, or are you using like, what, how did, like if I want to take a culvert that's like way further flying than that tree, but I want to like, power it down and just still get a clean flight out of it because I feel like when I'm trying to power down it's like my release is everywhere. It's all over the yeah. place. Okay, that, yeah, that, that has to do with like timing. Um, I'd have to see your form a little more, uh, but I can I can tell you this, my, my timing has to do with my feet and my arm. For instance, like if I wanted to throw power down like you're saying to like a putter, my pump that I do and a lot of pros do it. Like I have this little pump that I do before I throw, right? You know, Nate Doss has a, a, a very extreme one or Barry Schultz or somebody like that. They have that extreme pump. I figured out in the last couple of years that that pump is a very important aspect of the throw. What that pump is doing is it's telling your feet what to do, okay? When my pump goes forward or their pump goes forward, the back foot goes behind, okay? So it goes behind and then it follows it through the whole entire throw right so what i learned about that is exactly what you're trying to key in on if i wanted to throw shorter 
one thing that people don't understand is in order to do that, you still are trying to be accurate. So you're trying to throw hard. You're trying to throw shorter, but you're trying to throw hard, right? And that's when you get that kind of sprinkler system effect. What I do is I try to make sure everything's the same speed. So if I wanted to throw it straight to this uh, sign, would you think that I would look like this? Like a really fast throw and then throw? No. I would slow it down and make sure that every part of my throw is that speed, right? To where even my follow through, even after I throw this shot, when I throw, my arm's not going to be super aggressive. It's not going to be fast. I'm going to make sure that my speed of my whole entire body is going to go the speed that I want it to to throw this shot, right? See how I was really soft and really, you know, I felt like I was really in control there. And if I wanted to throw a medium speed, like say a mid-range a little, little further, let's say like the distance of in between this tree and the other tree, I'm going to go a little bit faster. But while I do that, my speed isn't going to speed up at the end and it's not going to really speed up during the middle. It's going to be the same speed through the whole entire process of my run-up, including my throw. Because then what you're doing is, now you're going to have really good timing, right? Your body's working with itself the whole entire way. I feel like one of the biggest things people kind of don't understand is like when hitting gaps. When you throw hard, it seems like you hit more gaps, right? You're a little bit more accurate. You're having that release point. But also, a lot of people say if you go slow, you'll hit the gap easier, right? Like smoother, be smoother. And that's where people get confused is because now they're going to go slow to hit the gap, but then what do you want to do? You want to juice it because then you want to hit the gap, right? And you know that if you throw it harder, you're going to hit that gap to where that's a big misconception. If I have a medium shot, why would I go slow and then juice it? Now my timing's all out of whack. My body doesn't know what's going on. You know, half the time I was going slow, half at the very end, now I'm going really fast. But if I go a medium speed through the whole time, I'm going to have that nice speed and that nice accuracy. You see, it didn't look like, it looked like I had that kind of same momentum through the whole shot, right? Sure, there's people who have become accurate by kind of speeding up and going really fast through the whole shot, but it's not going, you're not going to have that consistency. I mean, like this, if I were to go fast, I could still throw it kind of, kind of in the direction I want, but you see how I was out of control right there? Like nothing was going in, in, in the same speed. Exactly. I'm matching my run up with my arm speed and then my body's kind of working with itself. Sure. Oh, thank you. So on power throws, you know, we're getting over full power distance. Do you still try to keep kind of the same speed or do you focus on accelerating? No, then obviously... Uh, his question was on power throws then am I going to focus on everything being the same speed or am I going to accelerate through through the process it has to do with that and that's when it gets a little more tricky because now you're going faster how are you going to maintain that speed so like on this one you'll notice that my speed's going to be fast but my arm speed is still not going to be extreme You see what I mean? It didn't look like I did a lot there, but I did speed up in my run-up. I did go a little further. You see what I mean? Saying that's where I feel like there's a big misconception is people actually being like, okay, I have to throw far, so now I gotta go super fast and run and have this big old long run-up. But that's not what it's about. It's about having the good timing to where your body's working with itself to get that control, to get that timing, and that's when everything will come together and you'll have that nice, you know, distance and, you know, smoother release even on the shorter distances. Like I like, I love to use Macbeth as an example. When he's throwing his Nova shots, he's so good at that. I love watching him throw those. But if you watch, he's going so slow with them, you know, and he's not speeding up and throwing it hard. He's in control, you know, and he's actually who I learned that from is when you go slow, your whole body needs to go slow because then you'll have that control. He's fast, though. <laughs> He's got the fast. I think that last part kind of answered a question I had, because I noticed I was out practicing today for the sure. tournament. And 
I notice like a lot of my max power shots because I can get out, you know, 400 plus sometimes on a good release, you know. But uh, the thing is, a lot of times I'm pulling kind of like I did on the last throw. I pull it out wide, and I think it is. I'm trying to speed up right at the end, and so right. because of that, it's pulling me out. Absolutely, yeah. Through. So just focusing on maybe in the future, just keeping all a consistent motion. Absolutely, consistent yeah, through. for sure. Yeah. Makes sense. A power flick. I'm the wrong guy, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, I don't throw, I don't throw flicks for power. I, I do know that it's, you know, that kind of the same thing. The smoother you are, the further it's going to go. Um, but I've never been able to throw flicks very far. I've been really accurate, about like three, three fifty to three hundred feet is about all I got. But uh, yeah, if you want to uh, gain power, I'd say talk to a baseball player or something. <laughs> Some people just naturally can, you know, throw further. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I do know that uh, the harder you throw, if you can get the spin to match it, you're going to, you know, th obviously throw, throw it further. The more spin, the further it's going to go. And with saying that, one thing that I really focus on is spinning my sidearms a lot. And that's why I'm able to throw, like, putters really consistently, um, there's usually no wobble on my sidearm because of that, because I'm trying to make sure to put as many rotations on it as possible. And I know with that and then power will equal definitely more distance. Yeah. Question that reminds me of too. When you're gripping on that backhand, something a lot of people will talk about is, you know, if you squeeze harder, you're going to get more distance kind of thing. Is that something you've thought about a lot in your own practicing and stuff? Or? No, I think, I think in, in the practice, I found a good, a good pressure uh -huh. to use. And I think uh, with time, you'll, you'll be able to say, okay, I'm going to rip, I'm going to really grip this as hard as I can. And then you'll yank it and then you won't do it again. And you'll kind of learn. Cause I think the pressures are, you know, preferable for the person. Yeah. Like my, my pressure isn't a crazy amount, but it, you know, I can definitely feel myself kind of gripping it a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Pulling more with your pinkies or your your index finger and your thumb? Are you like pinching or are you like squeezing down? I'm, with drivers, I'm actually, I'm pulling it into here. Kind of with these two fingers. I'm pulling it into here. And then... I'm pulling it into my palm, right? And then when I throw, that's naturally coming out to where it's like my whole hand is working as as like the almost the sling instead of like, okay, I'm I'm focused on these two and like throwing like a touch shot or something. When I'm throwing drivers, I'm pulling it into here, and then when I'm throwing, I've figured out that natural release wherever that's coming out. Is your pinky tightening or is it kind of loose? My my pinky, let me see. That's a good question. My pinky's tight with these, you know, but the, it's definitely these that are, have the most pressure. Um, and my my thumb is putting a little bit of pressure down, but not a lot, you know. And I do know for a fact that a lot of good players have different pressures and stuff, and that's what I mean by get to the field, find that nice release, find what pressure works for you, and then and then you know work with that. It's definitely going to take you going to the field, throwing multiple shots with multiple pressures, especially being newer, and then figuring out that nice, consistent release that's, that works well for you. What about rollers? What do you think about, like, what, what do you focus on when throwing rollers? Well, it depends on what, what roller I'm throwing. I actually like to do, like, I like to take a flippy disc yeah. and then throw it like a normal, like, hyzer shot and then turn that into a roller okay. because, uh, I feel like, you know, that's a more consistent release than yanking over like this, and plus you get a little more power with it. A little more distance before it hits the ground. Yep. Too. Yeah, depending. Like if I'm doing a shorter roller, I'm going to definitely drop it, you know, somewhere around here. And that comes, that has a lot to do with that angle control that I was talking about. You know, uh, rollers have definitely become more or a little easier for me now that I realize that no matter what, I'll hit that angle that I want it to. Like I want to go through between these two flags and I know that if I follow through on my with my crease that I have to turn it into a roller, right? <laughs> so I just follow through down 
and then it's just a natural, nice little roller. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you, Infinite, for for filming this. You guys are the are the best and throw prodigy, and we'll see you guys out on the course. Peace out.